going to show you is from is a your review of what we've done. Um, <coughs> this is in um, uh, in Colorado. We've done about 30 service projects. We've been about 18. We had about eight missions, both in the last 2014. Um, this is in Illinois, Washington. We had tornado and mudslides. Operation Prairie Dog. This is what we do. This is us giving back to the community that's given everything to us. This is us bridging that gap between the time a disaster happens and the time more aid can get. We're there, we're doing the grunt work. This was Oklahoma last year. <coughs> EF5 tornado struck at 2.30 p.m. on May 20th, 2013. Four mile wide tornado. 30 mile long devastation. Roughly $15.75 million worth of damage, approximately. 15 fatalities, 200 and something injuries, in a roughly two hour period. So that gives, that poses the question. Really quick, that was on the news recently because it's the one year anniversary. Yesterday was the one year anniversary. Yes, and they were showing how there was rebuilding and there's quite not even <coughs> So, my question to you is how many of you believe that natural disasters are directly correlated to climate change and global warming? That should raise your hand so. <laughs> half the class? <laughs> well, let me tell you, that's roughly about right. That's about on average how many people usually think that. Now I'm going to show you the next slide is yesterday. Or within the last couple days. Uh, that's a supercell. This is the birth of a tornado. Or what could come as a tornado. As you see, this entrance right here, this is all the warm air coming and meeting up with the cold air. This here, this is rain. This is burga or hail coming down. This cloud layer, the tops of it is about 70,000 feet in the air. So higher than we fly. So they form up in the stratosphere. So the next video, this one video right here, is of the same cell. Is of the same picture that I just showed you. from birth to death of a supercell. So if you, uh, <laughs> so if you see right here, this is the Coriolis effect that you see that uh, Dr. Wait, Williams is oh, going to describe. You. It's warm air. When warm air and cold air meet, the warm air is pushed higher because warm air rises. And this level right here, this is all the cold air. So as it circulates, it comes up and it forms this high supercell, what we call, that can sometimes turn into what's called a wedge tornado. There are four types of tornadoes on the Fuji, uh, five, five types. There's an F0 which to F1, which is usually just straight line winds. Winds about anywhere from 60 to 90 miles an hour. So you can see it clearly right here. You can see how defined it is. These here, another way you can tell a that it's a tornado <laughs> is these cloud right here, these clouds. These are called mammoth's clouds. Now these only come during a tornado. You won't see them usually with a severe thunderstorm or the thunderstorms we got out here. These usually occur over the Midwest on a dry line. What a dry line is, is where polar air coming from Canada and warmer air coming from the Gulf of Mexico meet. And this is where you get these supercell births. So 
as it's forming, this is tough. This is time lapsed at about 15 times. This is over about a two to two and a half hour period. And you can just see that circulation. Another thing you'll start seeing is lightning pops. And there's three types of lightning during the supercell activity. There's regular cloud to cloud lightning, which is what we usually see. There's cloud to ground lightning, negative and positive. <coughs> and then there's positive lightning which is the most dangerous, the most fatal. If you get hit by positive lightning, you are dead. There is no coming back. And then during a tornado, there's your power flashes. That's the wall cloud. That's the leading edge of the storm. If you see that coming towards you, run. Run for cover. Try and run. Run for cover. Go to the most inside part of a house into a storm cellar. 15, <coughs> seven of the 15 fatalities that happened in Moore, Oklahoma were children. Took out Plaza Elementary School. Took out Briarwood Elementary School. I met three of those seven families. I was there in Oklahoma after the devastation. It was a war zone. These storms, you do not mess with. During the, luckily, this storm did not produce a tornado. It just formed and did its thing and blew out, blew itself out. These storms can produce anywhere from half inch hail, which is about pea size, to softball size hail. Going at about anywhere from 80 to 90 miles an hour. So that's taking a fastball to the head and to the face. <laughs> yeah. With a heel or something? No, it was a Why, what happened? Your plane? No, I didn't know. This next video, is of the same, <laughs> is of a different, but along the same dry line. Mm -hmm. This is from a great website called IFL Science. Uh -oh. You guys can guess what IFL stands for, I won't go into that. You can like it on Facebook. You can like it on Facebook. I don't know. just a uh, couple days ago in Wyoming. Now, mm -hmm. Wyoming <laughs> is very weird because it's the high plains. Average altitude there is about a mile high or so. So it's very different, but they still can get these spring supercells. So these are guys, uh, these are like, jab, jab. Actually, I know, um, from base. So you can actually see, so this is time lapse. <laughs> Between 15 and 40 times. Here, so you can actually see the birth and death of it. Now, this one, this actually did spawn a tornado. Right here, you see right back here, this is called the hook. This is when we see it on radar. <laughs> when we look at a radar photo, when we're tracking storms, this is what we see as the tornado. This is where the tornado is going to drop from. So there you can see how this is starting to turn into a wedge, how the upper part of it is blown out. So it almost looks like, a, like it's starting to come into a funnel cloud. All that on the top, on the higher end, that's all that hot air that's coming up from, well this actually, it was hot air that was coming up from the southwest. All that heat and all that hot weather that we got moved out and then moved up because there was a polar front coming down again. 
mostly from Canada and from the Pacific Northwest. You can see the Coriolis effect. That, that is the effect where you see that the, it's a spinning rotation, where hot air is getting wrapped up to the upper levels, and you see that cold air staying low. So right now they're going into the wall cloud. That's why you see how this is all rain and hail that's coming down on them. The hail that they were receiving two days ago was about inch and a half. Well, just about golf ball size. <coughs> cracks windshields, cracks heads even. I've been hit by it, and it hurts. <coughs> so, any questions so far? You have a more protective gear going on? Oh, no, we do. We wear helmets. <coughs> oh, no, we were... We were <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually there after the fact, because there have been times where I've been caught up in a tornado. Like, like flipped up in it? Uh, yeah, I've been caught up in several tornadoes. Last year was so bad that the famous storm chasers, the father and son, right, yeah. died. That's they died, bad. they died. And they, they know how to identify these things and how to They were chasing them. this next tornado. Anthony? Anthony? It's a, um, I'm from Kentucky, and I've been in some tornadoes, and sometimes we have absolutely yeah. yeah. The worst time to get a tornado, and you're, you're right, Anthony, the worst time to get a tornado is at night. Or if it's rain wrapped. It's like in springtime when it's in the middle of the winter, it's just been dead. It's still it's like, you know, it's like, you know, calling for the storm or screws. It can, it'll be really hot, and Anthony's right, it'll be really hot during the day, and there's that one point where that barometer just drops, and you get that cold air. And that's the time where you run. No is this, no nothing, and is this true in Kentucky? They were, well, no, we, they were saying that before it hits that the leaves on trees turn over? Yes. It's, a, yeah, it's everything just, it's like, it's like everything just stops moving. Yeah, and they say that the like, leaves, like this. It's, it's, it's eerie. Was this empty again? Yeah, like, so, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so, so I don't know if we're hurricanes or tornadoes. <laughs> 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 Two years ago, Another city of Joplin, Missouri, small Midwest town, um, had about 35,000 people, got slammed and just completely devastated by an EF5 tornado. The damage there of the Joplin tornado, winds excess to 250 miles an hour. So an EF5 tornado will give you extensive damage you'll get severe winds, <clears throat> injuries, and even fatalities. Now this next video, I will warn you, you're gonna see a lot of damage, and I didn't look at the whole video, but there, you might see some injury. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> so special. Now, this is the birth of the Joplin tornado. This is from a guy I know, uh, Jeff Kurotsky. There it is. It's on the I see it. I see it. Ah. One line, one line. Oh so that's called a power flash. Those are extremely deadly. You don't want to be anywhere near that.